everyone, it's Kelly from Kelly's Bead Boutique. So I've been making and teaching how to make jewelry for a very long time. And one of the comments that I always hear is, you make it look so easy. Well, I think it is. And I wanna show you just how easy it can be. So I'm gonna take some simple parts and some simple techniques and put them together and teach you how to make your very own jewelry. If you wanna see what I'm making today, come and join me. All right, so to make our bracelet today, we're gonna to be using some three millimeter leather. I've got some 20 gauge craft wire in a silver color. And for beads, I've got this beautiful new uh, check glass bead, and this one is called a Dahlia. I think it's about a 14 millimeter. And this one is in this beautiful silver that's got the mercury finish on it, and I think it is so gorgeous. And I also have one very similar in a rondelle. So fabulous looking. I think these ones are really, really unique. I also have another check glass rondelle that is sort of a sage green with a bit of a um, iridescent finish on it. I think these all pair up so nicely. And for my findings today, I have a little hook and you will seldom see me use something like this on my videos, but I thought let's try something a little different and see how it turns out. I also have a beautiful little charm. Some of these three millimeter cord ends. I have a large jump ring. This is a 16 gauge. I also have some accent beads and some little uh, bead caps. And as far as tools today, we're just going to be using our regular four, our cutters, our bent chain nose pliers, our round nose pliers, and our chain nose pliers. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut some wire, and I'm probably going to cut about six to eight inches. I want to make sure I've got lots for this one. And I'm going to place my chain nose pliers at the top, and I'm just going to sort of make sure that's nice and straight. And I'm going to go down about two inches and I'm going to line that up and bend away just creating a nice sharp 90 degree angle so now I'm going to come in about I'm going to like these are a long nose plier but if you have a short nose just go up a little bit because we do want a bit of a bigger loop so I'm going to go up and over and straight down open my plier rotate it so it's parallel to the table I'm going to bring that tail all the way to the back and then I'm just going to kind of line that up to make sure we have a nice round loop and now I'm going to place my little hook on there. So I'm just going to put that in there and then I'm going to wrap this up. Let's place my hook in, wrap it up by going just twice and then I'm going to work my way back up to the top because I want that really sort of bulky look. And this is also a good place to be imperfect. If you happen to make that sort of messy looking then that's the way it's supposed to be. Just give that a trim. And then I just double check to see if any burrs are sticking out and that one's kind of popped up a little bit. So I'm just going to boss it back where I want it. You're the boss of the wire, just make it go where you want. And that's what we want to start with. So now I'm going to place on my beads. So I've got my beautiful silver mercury check glass rondelle. And then I'm going to take my silver spacer and then one of my bead caps and then my beautiful sage green rondelle and then another bead cap. And then this beautiful Dahlia, just love that. I think that's so stunning. And then repeat on the other side in reverse. So I'll put on my sage with my bead caps and then my spacer and then my rondelle bead. So now we've got this beautiful run of beads. So now I wanna um, make my next loop so I want to make sure that it's going in the exact same direction so what you can do is just sort of line it up like this so that I'm, I'm looking through it this way and I want it to go that same direction so now I'm just going to bend straight down and now they will go in the same direction so I'm going to repeat like I did on the first one so go back to the same spot up over down rotate bring that to the back and now you can see that's way over there so I'm just bringing it back up on itself so that we end up with a round loop versus something that's kind of hanging out over the edge, which will create a bit of a P. So now before I do this up, I'm going to place this on here. So I've got my little charm and I'm just gonna put it in sort of the barrel there. And then now I wanna make sure that I put on one of these little end caps. All right, 
right? So now I'm gonna do that up. So now make sure before you do it up that you've got your charm and then you've got your end cap. You wanna have your end cap on the outside like that. So I'm gonna go right across that and I'm gonna wrap up. So I go down once or twice and then work my way back up. And it might be hard to see because there's so much metal there, but I'm just wrapping until I can't really wrap anymore. And then using the flush side of my cutter, I'm gonna come in, give that a little trim, turn it over, make sure that you don't have any burrs sticking out. And it is a little hard to get hold of all this because there's so many things in the way, but I can sort of see that sticking out there. And I'm gonna give that just a little smush down just to make sure that it's, there we go, so it's nice and soft. So now I'm gonna take my leather and I wanna make sure my end is sort of a blunt cut, which that one is, and I'm gonna put it in my crimp end. So what I do is I make sure that it's pushed up enough so that I can see it, and then I pull back just a little tiny bit because I don't want to see my leather there. Now you want this to go in the natural flow because this is gonna be sort of a wrap bracelet. So you don't wanna have it like this on the side and then have that coming out. You can see now the flow goes that way. It just won't be very nice on. So you always, always wanna make sure that you're going in the natural flow of the leather. Now we do have two different kind of crimps on the website. These are the, I think they're like PAS162 or something like that, I can't remember the code. But these are a little bit more heavy duty than the other ones that we carry. So they are pricier, but you can kind of tell the difference. They are beautiful. And I think these ones come from Israel or something. They're just a beautiful um, finding. So now you only want to crimp in the midsection. You never want to crimp these outside ones. So you're just going to take your tool and just squish on the middle. So I just kind of do a little bit and I go back and forth. I find that you can't do it all in one fell swoop. And if your pliers don't have a, a pointy enough thing, you can always use your bent chain nose because those tend to have a bit more of a pointy end and you can kind of just go in there like that. So, you know, just make your tools work for you. There we go. So now we have to do a little bit of fitting before we complete this bracelet. So the way that it's gonna go on is it's gonna lay on the side like that. So what I wanna do is I wanna place this on my wrist and I'm gonna mold it to my wrist. I'll show you right now. Like So that's the way it is and you can see that it sort of sticks up and it's not very attractive looking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mold that to my wrist a little bit. Get everything the way I want it. There we go, that's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna wrap this around my wrist twice. Now it's kind of, <laughs> It's, nothing ever works easy on camera. So what I'm doing is I'm wrapping one in front and one in the back, and then I want to have this finish so that um, when I put this on the end, I'll be able to do it up. Now I have a larger wrist, so this piece of leather isn't really long enough to really kind of show you, but we'll make sure that we give you enough so that if you've got a, a larger wrist, you it will work. But I pre-cut this yesterday and then I realized, oh, that's not gonna fit me for on camera but I mean, it barely would. So what I wanna do is I'm going to place my, I know this sounds a little crazy, it's backwards, but I'm going to take this large jump ring and I'm using this one because it's, I wanna have an, a round ring on the end, but I needed something that I could open. So that's why we're using this really heavy duty one. So I'm gonna place it through there and then tighten that up really well. Just jiggle back and forth until it becomes sort of seamless. And now you can take this and place it on the end here. And you could kind of dry fit this a little bit in that you can now take this and place it on your wrist and then wrap it around. I'm sorry, it's hard to try to do all of this on camera and not have it falling down and you know, <laughs> everything goes the wrong way when you're trying to do it on camera. But once you play around with things yourself, it's a whole lot easier at home. Okay, so I'm trying to get this so that you guys can see, but you know, it's just not cooperating today. But basically, I'm gonna go around twice there until that meets up to be able to go in there. So you wanna, you don't wanna have this tight. So it may take a little bit of playing around. So I hope this hasn't really been confusing for you as far as trying to figure out the, the uh, measurements for the length. Really this little piece on the end here is only gonna add an extra quarter inch. So I would wrap it around my wrist the three times to make sure that it's gonna meet up sort of figure out where it's gonna be comfortable and then trim a little bit on the long side, try it one more time and then put on your crimp. It's just kind of hard because I don't have extra leather at my house here. It drives me crazy when I'm trying to make projects and I don't have enough stuff here. So I had a little bit of a shorter piece, but you can kind of get the idea. So again, we're gonna come in here and making sure I've got this going in the same direction as the other one in that it's the natural flow. 
So I'm gonna place that on and then I'm going to crimp this up. And so give it a little, little smush on either side or come in here with my bent chain nose, which I really love using for so many things. These are so versatile and I can't imagine making jewelry without them. So there you go, there's the completed bracelet. I love how quickly this came together and how striking it looks. And you can see it just does up really super easily with that hook and you just pop it into that ring on the end there. So it's really easy to get on compared to a lot of bracelets. And it's got that gorgeous leather look as a nice accent. I think this one's so fabulous. And of course those colors are really speaking to me. So and as always, this will be available in kit form. To access the kits, you just go into the description box below this video and it will take you to my website and it's fully secure and safe for shopping. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from everybody and please make sure to subscribe to my channel. I wanna thank you so much for watching and we will see you on the next one.